Today I would like to talk about the structure of the offices that provide funding. So imagine a board of directors in an office and grant board members walking around with a portfolio in their hand. In this portfolio is a list of grants that they have access to with all the details in it that they have to submit and critique and give feedback on and score and answer to their seniors in the funding the, the funding agency now what would they want to do what they want to do is they want to fill up this portfolio of grants that they have funded that enhance is it that enhances this portfolio they want to boast about the grants that they have given over a period of let's say two years they want to boast about this for a long period over and over again in every board meeting to every new investor that comes in to donate money to them when when a, when a company comes to donate money to a funding agency to people who, to the to the organization that provides the grant to you the grantee with the portfolio of grants in her or his hand wants to boast about the in in a philanthropic kind of way be proud of um, the progress that the grants that they have allotted have made over a long period of time let's say 10 years and they want to fill this up now we as people who are writing grant proposals when we write a grant proposal we need to put it in such a way that the board of directors sees it as a piece of gold lying on their table with historical impact the impact of it fi finally we get a score and it's called the impact score so let's say i'm a, i'm the grant reviewer i'm the one reviewing the grant and giving you the fund i will have an impact score this impact score the lower the impact score what they're searching for is flaws in your grant proposal so it's like getting a grant proposal and seeing the flaws in it and the more you can eliminate flaws the higher your grant score and it's called the impact score in this impact score the grant reviewer can remove any criteria that they like for example if innovation is part of one of the criteria of giving a score they can eliminate that and higher your impact score or lower your, lower your impact score to for you to finally get this grant so let's say you submit a grant in january the final decision of the score that is given to your grant while it goes through the whole office structure of while it goes to the whole office structure and gets in and is eligible to be a part of this portfolio that the foundation wants to talk about to investors who for future funding for their organization will only arrive by the end of December and you will only get a reply for your grant maybe on the next year and finally get a grant maybe after a year and a half or something so the structure of the organization is very important to understand how after you have submitted a grant how it reaches the grant reviewer and how you finally get this impact score so what happens is first of all an individual who is writing the grant creating the grant doing the studies um, publishing papers the worker is not allowed to submit a grant to um, is, is allowed to ask for a grant from a grant agency the ones that have billions of dollars all around the world there are very few in India and they're very hard to access but 
let's say there are international ones there are ones all around the world so the structure is is that what an individual who is right doing the grant proposal has to do is that they have to go to a university or an institution in this university or institution they have to contact their teacher who will contact the administrator who will contact the offices who will contact the dean and each of them will write a letter as saying that this individual wants to submit a grant next year because the preparation for it is like a whole year in advance so each person like you know the um, supervisor your teacher the mentor the administrator the office person the secretary of the dean the final dean each of them will write a letter to the next one and each person will approve of the letter and that's how it reaches the dean the dean will finally see your grant uh, see the idea see the letters that have been passed down from teacher to you know to to finally get the institution the dean will finally make the decision whether the institution or university will be uh, will would like to submit this grant to the foundation who is providing the who is providing a grant that you would like to benefit from so um, so what happens is that uh, the dean what he has to do is that he has to submit his university or institution under the uh, under this government law that um, that allows institutions and universities to be able to accept awards from international foundations that are providing these grants so once the university or institution by the dean has been the dean once he has submitted the institution university name and gotten approval for internet uh, foundation to receive grants from inter- from foundations from around the world through the internet once this permission has been given then your university or institution is in that list and is eligible by the government to receive an award so that you may get funded for your career for your research for your training for your studies for your higher university for your scientific proposals i mean for your scientific further studies for your phd etc etc or art grant so the dean has now put the university and institution what you do is that you write your you write this grant proposal over a period of one year it takes about 5 whole months to convince your institution with all the little letters of approval and uh, submitting your university in the list of um, list of uh, um, eligible awardees like they have to be eligible by the us government to the indian government and every all the governments have to approve that your university is in that that your university has to be in that list now what happens is that takes 5 months your grant writing process takes about a whole maybe 3 months to 1 year depending on how efficient or succinct you are there are grants that go that are that there, there are grants that are 150 pages and there are grants that are just 10 pages and um, and so you have to see what your primal preliminary research is prior to writing this grant and how heavy it is and the way you write the way you structure this is what i would like to talk about today and what the final impact score is and how you finally get this grant into your university which you may benefit from by having a fully funded um education maybe for let's say a fully funded education for 5 years and then what progress you make because of this grant and uh, what significance it has um on the country what significance it has to your society what significance it has to the fundee to the sponsor and what everybody can boast about at the end of you receiving your grant of what progress you made so that the future investors can get more funding and uh, and and see this organization as um as worthy enough to um, to give more money to and to fund further to fund more people 
so um so let's say let's start from the back and say i am a grant reviewer the grant reviewer has an office meeting in this office meeting the grant reviewer looks at a few things in the way that they score your grant and the way like the criteria under which they are scoring your grant proposal like you asking for tons of money to further your career for example or your research studies so the so they receive each each grant reviewer receives let's say 12 and every year there's about 120 grants that they're reviewing and what they do is that they keep the best grants as the first 50 and they only review those and they because they would like a few they want to only discuss a few grants so that they can go deep into the grant and see how they can benefit this uh, this um this person who's writing the grant this institution who is writing the grant is submitting the grant so um the people who are the grant reviewers are very smart people they're busy very very busy people they have a job already and the and the, the they spend 30 minutes reading your grant even though you spent one year writing this grant so you spent 12 months writing this grant and the grant reviewer is spending 30 minutes skimming through it to basically see how easy just how enthusiastic confident easy and per- precise and accurate it is and the grant review himself is a critical person a very practical person because they want to see that can they they're always asking can this person really do what they're saying you know i mean if you're saying you want to do research on art and um I mean so you search on some scientific thing and you want to hire 10 people can you really hire those 10 people can you really do this research they want to keep they keep asking these questions so they're very skeptical because they don't believe that it's possible first of all they're very busy they're very smart and they're very critical so it's like having very fixed ideas and they want their grant proposal to look a certain way so that they can be like wow this is exactly how i wanted to see a grant proposal and therefore i will give a high score because the way that this grant proposal has been written is the way i want to be seeing it and the way i want to add it to my portfolio to submit to my seniors in my foundation so that they can uh, be proud of my input and therefore they can promote my portfolio to investors and investors will be interested in further funding to the organization and the organization can fund for the universities and that's how they can expand so uh, so the grant itself has to have um many ways that it grabs attention from the grant reviewer it has to be very easy to read and firstly it has to be eligible to receive the grant if the first eligibility criteria is of you know the university not being a part of the government list and all these final and there are not enough letters of approval coming from the university if those are not uh, in order then it's automatically rejected so the way you can find out about this is that you when you download a grant um a grant request at the back of the grant re- request there's a contact person who's the program supervisor and they are going to provide you this final information that has to be excluded or included in the grant for example the format of how the grant reviewer wants to see the way you have allocated your budget for example over a period of one year of who you're going to pay how you're going to pay them what exactly each pay, each part of your funding where it is going to be allocated and how the math is exactly perfect the budgeting is perfect it's like to the t mathematics they want that budget format to be in a certain way so you have to ask each funding organization for example there's a science for Uh, science uh, funding organization you know for doctors for example it's just called nih for example but under that there are 27 founding organizations and each of these 27 founding organizations minor ones have a different format so for each fund each funding proposal you have to find out that specific organization's format 
which is provided at the back of the application, which you will ask your program advisor. You, as an individual grant writer, will never ever be able to speak to the final, the, the grant funding organization because only a university or an institution can have communication with them to receive grants. In fact, if you do talk to, a, if you do find out who your, um, who your grant reviewer is and try to contact them and try to speak to them about your specific grant that you submitted to the university, then your grant is disqualified. So basically only go through your school, your university and your institution Submit it through them, get them, get your dean to submit it to this organization under the university or institution's name. Um, so all these letters have to be arranged and, um, and the main hook of this in your grant proposal is the AIMS page. In this AIMS page, the um, the structure in which you have to give the aims of your of the reasons that you want the grant is that it has to be like a triangle like this and at the base of the triangle is your big problem here is the giant big problem over the pro over this big problem here is what has been found out about this big problem all the research that has been done over that here is what i have contributed to the studies about this big problem which is the base here then the smaller section is here is the gaps that are missing in the research of of uh, solving this big problem and then finally, you have the aims, which is what you are going to be doing. This is what, this is your idea. This is what you will be doing to solve this big problem on, over which the studies have been done, over which you have provided, um, uh, uh, you have provided, um, you have provided work for, you're uh, like by finding out that these are the gaps and the aims are what you which is like the peak of it is what is exactly how you will be solving these problems and those are the aims of your of your organization now uh, as a grant writer what you have to do is that for each foundation and for each grant funding um, each grant funding uh, organization um, you have to find out exactly what is relevant to them and never deviate from what is relevant to them meaning what do they want to fund you can never deviate from that because if you are deviating and saying I want funding for this but you are providing funding for this but I still want to convince you you're not going to convince them because they have to um, they have to uh, fill in forms and papers and if these um, criteria don't match those forms and papers that they have to provide to their government and to uh, to um, you know do paperwork if it, the paperwork doesn't match then they can't provide you this funding because it doesn't come under that bracket of what their uh, vision is their mission is their their statement is um, so this so for example when you have career and training grants let's say you have a career and you want to um, expand your career and you want a grant for your further training to for, for training of um, your employees you want grants for training the way the score the, the way the scorecard the impact uh, score is the criteria under that are they will see why you as an individual are a good fit to receive this career or training grant as a candidate are you an eligible candidate then they will see what is your career development plan what is your whole plan over 12 years for your career development and therefore you need this training grant or career 
grant. They want to know what your research plans have been, are and will be and they want to know your mentors. Who are the people that influence you to get to this idea to begin with? Who and their CV. So let's say you have three mentors. They want the CVs of these mentors, the people who inspired you to get into this field. Then they want the consultants in your organization and their CVs as well. They want um, your, your partners and collaborators, people who are um, you know, you're collaborating and partnering with in your career, in your training, in your business. Who, who are these people and their CVs as well? They want uh, your. They want to know your commitment towards this institution that is asking for the grant for you. For example, if um, if um, the science national science university is asking for a grant from an organization in the u.s they want to see your commitment to this institution like oh i plan to be in this institution for five years i mean for the future five years of this institution the research that you're going to be doing there in the national science university that has been registered to receive a grant by them and they want to know that the whole environment of this of this institution and they want to know finer things like, um, you know, uh, like all the people involved and who, how many people you want to hire and things like that. Now, now what they do is that they score these things and, um, and then after they score these criteria, they provide a final impact score. And this impact score is what you will receive after one year of receiving, of submitting your grant. So you submitted your grant in December, like you wrote your grant in January, you got it finished by December you submitted it in December um, and you will get the reply the whole like the next whole year now for example if you have the impact score of um, the impact score of uh, science research for example now science research is um, is still like under like um, scientific research and science you know and uh, so the, the way that they would assess this impact score is that um, they're walking around with the grant portfolio and suddenly you uh, submit a grant that has been on their agenda for like two years but nobody has addressed it so let's say for five years ten years there's been this one agenda that has not been spoken about or has not been addressed by their office uh, by in their board meeting because no one has even submitted a grant for such a thing and let's say you're the one who submitted a grant and is part of an agenda that has not been addressed they will automatically you will go to the top of the pile because it's uh, it's innovative and unusual and it hasn't been addressed in their agenda it's not about what is your agenda it's about their agenda so that they can make their grant portfolio a fatter grant portfolio and just submit it to investors to submit grants so that when they get their funding they can the they can invest this funding and grant you the money from their um, from their profits so let's say they have a there's an in, private endowment fund of 1 billion the the profit that they receive from investing that 1 billion is the final grant that you will receive and they want more and more of that so there's a this is significant score like um how significant is this in this how significant is this to us as a grant providing organization if it's significant and it has a great impact on us then the grant reviewer will put it on the top 50 pile and and go deep into it as the um there's an investigator score so you are an investigator I'm investigating uh, this research in this science field or this art field I'm investigating it there's an investigator score how deep are you investigating how deep are you going to investigate it and how interesting is it for other people to write papers about for other people to want to expand on it for example there's Wikipedia if there was only one Wikipedia article there would be no fun but each Wikipedia article can be expanded. Each word in every each word in, an, in a Wikipedia 
article can be expanded into a whole new article. So you have to write such an interesting grant that each sentence, one a person who's reading it would like to expand on it, like write a whole um, publication about it and publish it somewhere in some paper, you know. So that's called, that's an investigator score. Then there's um, an innovation score, which is a very new new thing. It's been introduced in the way that a grant reviewer would provide you grant funding. So this innovation score is uh, for that's why Google has like so many, like get so much funding for their innovation sector. You know, Xerox has a very big innovation. Uh, and Microsoft, they have a very big innovation center, you know, where people can just go have fun and do do whatever you want, but just create something that no one's ever thought about before. If you have this this aspect, an innovation um, criteria in your uh, grant writing proposal, then also your score, your impact final impact score can be higher because the board members will be like, oh look, there's there's um. They have innovation going on, so automatically that makes it a better grant proposal from the institution or university. They want to know about the whole environment of your um, of your whole project and your institution and your your university, and um, they want to know um, what are your future projections, and they want to know all your data sharing plans. So let's say you have uh, done. You want funding, you got the funding, and then you are doing research for 10 years, and then you have all you finally got all this data. You've worked for 12 years, you've got this research grant, um, scientific research grant, and you worked on it for 12 whole years with and they provided the funding for you. Then um, then the data that you finally get, what are your plans for that data? How are you gonna use that data to make it a sustainable, long-term, historic, impactful, um, final you know, uh, back it so so that they can they can explain this to their future investors that look we provided a grant this grant worked they they used our uh, gr- they used our funding for twelve years they finally came up with all this data and all this data that they came up with after twelve years had this impact and that impact is going to provide you the grant this impact is going to provide you with your with your future funding your future scores and for future other organizations as well and it will also benefit your community it's like uh, you have a a grant proposal let's say this is my grant proposal and it's 150 to 10 pages it is basically a hot or not situation for the grant reviewer is this hot or not meaning they are basically looking at the list of strengths versus this this list of liabilities that the funding is basically you're spending on so for example in your in your funding uh, if you're asking for oh i would like international travel in my career grant i would like um, you know just things that are not extremely relevant then you cannot get this funding because um, they see it as a liability and not as a strength so you have to have 100% strengths and 0% liabilities and that's how you get to the top 50% of the 120 applications that they receive per year so it has to be attention grabbing and so the the tiers of the institution are you have a program officer who basically um, basically you have a a university or an institution that provides your um, grant funding application your your app your 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 funding grant submission is pro- is given to a program officer this program officer who's roaming around with um, this portfolio of different kinds of grants from all over the world and um, all their criteria and all their eligibility he, all the information in this portfolio their investors their they everything that they are talking about in their board meetings they see the merit of it it's like um 10 men sitting around a board meeting table and one man is going to be saying that oh this is really meritorious it's really it's like gold you know on our table and uh, it's got a lot of it's definitely eligible to be submitted to uh, an advisory council uh, in an of of the funding institute so that 
it's, it can be submit it's it's got merit enough to be submitted to the advisory council so it goes to an advisory council and this advisory council is the one that looks at your submission and gives the recommendation to the funding organization um, and says look here's a grant writing proposal that is relevant to you out of the hundred types of grants that they can give like let's say there are 250 types they're called study groups there are 250 types of grants they fall under different categories they'll say that this grant that I've received is relevant for this category and here's my recommendation for it then it falls into um, this is all for the grant portfolio the grant portfolio of the funding organization um, then from there it will be like how is this the way they, they, the advisory council will look at your uh, grant writing proposal is that they will see how is this good to talk about on our grant portfolio to investors. Um, then this will go into, um, into the centers of review. It's like a central point. Finally, it'll get to the central point. The center, the central point of reviewing uh, will will send it to the referral branch, the receipt branch, like the branch that is in charge of receiving the uh, receiving um, art funding submissions. Then they will pro then the, then what they will do is that they will allocate uh, they will place your grant proposal into a specific study group under 250 types of study groups that they have in their in their organization so from the board meeting it goes to the uh, like a reviewer reviewer to advisory council advisory council to a central point central point to people who are in charge of receive receiving and referral that branch then that branch allocates it to a specific study section for consideration and in that study section, it will be considered there. So what they're doing is they're looking at different types of grants that are coming from around the world and they're saying that, um, oh, this one fits into this study section, this one fits into this study section. It's just paperwork, you know, it's like, this is, the, this is for this study section, this is for this study section. Then, um, um, then you have the board of reviewers from the, each study section has a board of reviewers. These reviewers are experts. These reviewers who are reviewing your grant can be hired for a one or two time purpose by them or they can be long term. Usually the period is four years. So uh, let's say you are a board reviewer. You can be hired by a, a foundation for a period of four years or you could be if there are some specific things like um, the person who reads um, you know graphs okay and they don't have anyone who reads graphs perfectly and your uh, proposal has a lot of graphs in it then uh, they will hire a specific expert on graphs just one or two times just to review this specific thing you know they put everything that they have into this proposal so that it can reflect back on to them in 12 years so they say um, I would recommend this grant it would be good for this study section so what you can do when you're writing a grant proposal is that before you even before your university or institution has submitted it you can do this research on what study group your uh, grant proposal fits into in an organization and do the work for them prior to submitting your proposal to a university or institution and um, you can uh, tell them I recommend this grant that I am submitting to be a part of this specific study section in this um, funding organization um, for review critique and stuff like that so in this grant writing proposal your peer reviews are really important your like um, your mentors are really important the director of your program is really important uh, the grant the progress of your grant the progress of the grant that has been provided for you the progress you made with that grant is the most important them they 
are giving you a grant and they want to know what is the progress that you made for the whole 12 years that you were using it and that is the specifics of which you have to provide mathematically specific so if the math doesn't you know if the math doesn't fit for example if you ask for 10 million and for 12 years but they know you're going to but then you also want international flights and in, involved they're wondering how is my 10 million going to be um how is my 10 million going to ha- um give progress show any progress in 12 years if you spent it all in the first 3 years so the math has to fit if you're saying you need it for 12 years you need to allocate your budget over a period of 12 years so that at the end of it when you finally get your data you can provide this data to them and that is their that, that is their prize you know that is their thank you um for providing this grant to you to begin with of you know whatever uh whatever you asked for but whatever like your fellowship portfolio was um so the grant management officers are only spoken to by universities only universities can speak to grant management officers individuals cannot so uh what you do is you request for an application so you have to always be on the internet looking for these grants there are new ones that come up every single year from institutions all around the whole world you request for an application you look at the back of the the application request uh, the application that you downloaded you look at the back of it there's a contact that is your program supervisor the program director who you can speak to that is the person you can speak to you cannot speak to the grant management officer of the whole organization and talk about your single individual grant in one study group that went to some office at the back you cannot talk about that you can talk to the program director who will provide you the details that you had to put into your grant writing proposal you have to go into the areas of focus you have to have a vision a mission and you have to be eligible and you have to be very relevant to them they if you are relevant to them then you are fine there are types of applications there are you know um like there's this there's like you have a you have a whole application and then at the end of your grant writing proposal there is a summary this summary is basically what will be published everywhere by them they using the your summary at the end of your grant at the end of your grant proposal to publish in their um papers and in, in their in publications and newspapers to say that look this is what we have uh, funded like here is so you have to boast about your work there yourself there the university like just like a publication you have to write a publication which is the grant proposal summary at the end of your grant proposal so um what would be great is that if you had a grant bot if you had a way to find out every new grant that comes up um you can always like you would be able to you know do for the you would know what is what funding what funding organization is best that would want to give you a grant you would know best if you if you kept looking um you'd see who is willing the types of grants usually are there are these these um there are these specific categories that they have to um, address and they go under research fellowships uh career career development research fellowships are called tnf career development is called k 900 something like that there are research there are research grants which are called the k series grants there are program project grants the program project grants are uh, program projects are basically where um, the foundation uh, where what they do is that um, they pull um, specific people from everywhere and create a team they pull multiple people to target a specific problem so let's say you have your aim is this is your big problem 
how to how are you targeting this problem um is by uh, your format would be i am basically pulling multiple people from uh, like one um, doctor from nyu i've got a uh, you know the dean of this of uh, harvard university the the professor from stanford university um the researcher the scientist from this place um you know uh, uh, this innovation guy from um, mit and we're putting we're putting together a team of 10 people and this 10 people will be a program project to target this one specific problem this type of grant falls under program projects and then you have starter grants um so in when you're writing a grant do not deviate from their eligibility criteria it, that is present in their request for proposals when a funding organization or a grant funding organization is basically submit uh, saying that here is a request for proposals like we are willing to accept proposals from universities for funding if you deviate from those words that are mentioned inside the request for proposals you will automatically be disqualified because they can't put you in any specific under any specific cat category so you have to basically study it like keep it open all the time and go over it over it with a highlighter and and formulate your grant writing only under these criteria to make it eligible for their portfolio in their grant place you have to if you when you're writing about how impactful it how good it will be for them to be able to fund uh, what benefits that they will receive from the data that you have collected at the end um you have to also say how it will be important this data that you've created at the end of 12 years after you used up all their funding money how this data is going to be um beneficial for uh for your government for your society for the world for whoever um what you can do to practice is that you can download uh people uh, you can download proposals that have been submitted submitted by other people through institutions and then be the grant reviewer yourself so if you see a grant review you can just go over it and you can rethink this other people's proposals and see how how could I, they have done this better and how what should they have added and subtracted what do the funders want was the format was it well formatted like was it so imagine you're, like at the you've worked all day long you're really tired you've got a hotel room to go to at the end of your board meeting you finally get to your hotel room and you only have 30 minutes to review a grant that somebody has put two whole years of research work and um, writing you know with the forms and letters of recommendation and and like such a big project okay so you are 30 you're tired you're busy you you have you've just reached home after a full day long of work you've laid on your hotel room bed and you've opened up your grant proposal you have 30 minutes to basically have make a, an impact score this grant reviewer is going to lie down in his hotel room bed tired as hell from the whole day's work and review your grant for a whole 30 minutes is just going to skim through it and see the points that are popping out that are highlighted and then put your uh, put your grant proposal in a specific category is this in the top 50% of the 120 or is it at the bottom 50% it's very simple um what so what they're looking for is they open the grant proposal and they they see like so many strengths they're like oh i'm bombarded with strengths if the if the strengths are higher than the liabilities of the money that you are requesting so the money is basically all liabilities right if the strengths that are there in your proposal are higher than the liabilities your your grant proposal goes into the top 50% um 
that's how the reviewer basically what he does is that he comments on it he critiques it he reviews it and then he takes your grant proposal from a specific study group and submits it to the board of reviewers the board of reviewers creates the primary reviewer a secondary reviewer and then who have the main uh, impact score who finally write the final impact score and under that there's like a, a few people who are just sitting around who give their opinion and under under the people who are giving an opinion let's say there are 10 people who uh, are giving an opinion that oh i think it's it's actually shouldn't be given that lower score they're just saying that you know it should be given a higher score i like this part i like that it's got innovation i like that it's got um you know i like that I, they, they're just giving the opinion they can basically um they're rating they're like the rating people you know and then under that there's like just some a few more people you know um, who are doing like just paperwork stuff so uh, so basically there's like a, a whole table with papers all over it and there's like a whole board meeting table and so your piece of paper your 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 little proposal in a whole table full of proposals has to basically stand out and there's like pieces of paper all over the table and then one main reviewer what he has to do is that he has to reach for your paper because it's it's standing out and it's like it's like gold on the table it's standing out it's meritorious it's perfect they stand out and they pick it up and they say this one seems the most impactful for our organization to put in our portfolio to submit to our investors to get more investing because at the end of this proposal that I have in my hand, it's got the most amount of impact sustainability that's coming in to uh, to receive further funding from investors that we can invest and then we can have more profits. These profits from our investments can go to more to the rest of the um, uh, grant proposal institutions, you know. So, so they're looking, they, they're looking on a table of papers, they're looking for the best piece of paper there, you know. Like your proposal has to look like the best piece of paper there. Um, your reason for wanting this grant has to be exact, meaning like um, like the person who like um, like exact meaning like the wor the wordings in it have to be strong, like assess, test, establish. I want we want to conduct, we want to determine, design, we want to identify these bullet points these graphics this is the research that we done this is the preliminary research it has to be like the most boring mathematical graph paper ever and no flowery stuff because the people who are reading it are too tired to feel pretty at that time they, they're not feeling pretty they're feeling like how strong they, they're looking for strength you know they're looking for uh, bullet points and they're looking for like that bullet point uh, impact graph research stuff so in this grant proposal you have to leave a lot of white space as well your grant writing proposal has to have a lot of white space to relax the person who's lying down after a hard days of work with your hard hard day of work on their hotel room bed they have to take a flight early in the morning at 6 a.m the next day they know at 7 a.m they know they only have three hours of four hours maximum of sleep and they want to sleep now okay so it's late in the evening they've just finished their dinner they've got to the hotel room this they're, they're looking at your grant writing proposal and they're dying to sleep so you have to have a lot of calming cool white space it has to be on, no flowery language only bullet points a lot of graphs a lot of proofs like um, verifications proofs um, you know nothing too boring either because I mean it has to be precise for example if you say on page 1 that uh, on page 10 out of your 150 page proposal you say on page 1 that page 150 has uh, this reference then it better have that reference you cannot make any mistake like there can be zero mistakes like if you say something then you have to show you have to show how you're gonna match what you said basically through action like your budget form has to be a precise budget form 
and then these in your bu- in the budget it has to be an allowable budget so let's say i am a grant reviewer i have to tell my board that uh, listen we need a we need to submit this grant to this university for this uh, grant proposal that they have submitted this university has submitted a grant proposal under the study group and uh, in the budget there are a couple of things that are not allowable by us then your grant will be discarded so you have to see that in the budget is your um, is your in your budget the the way you are budgeting are these expenses that you are mentioning which comes under their liabilities section from the strengths and liabilities that they're ticking out when it goes there um are these expenses allowable are you al- allow are these allowable to us so if they're not allowable to that specific grant foundation then you cannot include it into your budget for example if if the if the foundation has written that in our budget we are not uh, i mean uh, international travel is not allowable um you know um cost sharing between um between two uh two grant found uh, fund uh, two grant proposal um submissions are not you cannot share the grant you know between two people if that is not allowable if that's not allowable um if renovation of your office is not allowable in your career grant if renovations are not part of the allowable budget um any indirect costs are not allowable if these are not allowable then they cannot be added into the budget that you have into the budget that you are creating in a specific budget form that you got from your program director which was which was in the contact at the back of the form of the of the request form of requesting of proposals from the grant foundation you have to know the difference between goals and objectives objectives are like the anchor of a ship that doesn't let a ship move objectives are anchorable they are proofs and they are part of a, the sponsor's mission and goals are just more airy fairy they can they like you know flowers of the field while the objective is like the hard proof you know it has to be it's better to have three well crafted objectives because they know that you will be able to follow those if there's only three then you they know that okay you can follow those but if you write we have nine objectives in our uh, grant submission like these are all the list of objectives that we have they will doubt it because they will see that how can you how can you Uh, accomplish all of them so it's better to have just three accomplishable ones than nine maybe maybe not accomplishable ones in your you have to have a project plan and you have to show what are the activities that are going to be carried out um the way you write a project plan and like the activities carried out um would be who what when where how how are these activities going to be carried where are these activities going to be carried out when are these activities going to be carried out in the next 12 years what are these activities exactly and who is going to carry out these activities so you have to call the program program officer and you have to make it very logical that like of course this is obvious that we would have to do this right for for um uh, oh we would they, it would have to be like um frugal like feasible like so if the grant is of 10 million or 10000 whatever it is dollars you have to say that this is feasible for us like it's fitting in it's it's under budget you know it's um, it's frugal and it's very practical frugal and it's very logical that of course if it's 10 million then only this much can be used for this activity you know so the mathematics have to be perfect you have to have a sustainability plan which is very important that nobody talks about apparently in a stat- sustainability plan um you have to find out that after you have received a grant after you have finished using up the grant money uh, after your institution has used up this funding that they have been provided by the organization the data that you receive the data that that you gained from this how is it going to be sustained how is it go- uh, so basically it's the dissemination how are you going to sustain it so you have a bunch of this data that you receive that you 
uh, received after 12 years after uh, you receive the grant okay you receive the grant in the year 2000 and now in 2022 you ha have all this final data that they want to know this final data that you got in 2022 when you got the grant in 2020 and in, in the year 2000 or whatever this data the way you have disseminated it how did you keep it sustainable how do you keep it relevant and alive so maybe you created a whole um, your in your grant proposal that you will write that uh, with the data that I am going to receive at the end of this 12 years, I'm going to create a whole um, university curriculum behind it. Uh, you're going to, um, you know, uh, make many publications like university publications like the Harvard Review. You know, you're going to put it in uh, magazines and publications that belong, that are going to benefit further studies. Um, how you're going to... Um, make uh, partnerships with it like you're going to take this data and somebody else's data and then partner with it um you're going to you're going to basically give it a lot of importance in these specific ways this is how i'm going to sustain the data that i'm going to receive in 12 years after your grant is over so you know i'm going to create um educational curriculums and i'm going to create manuals publications um make partnerships um, things like that the title of your grant proposal has to be so accurate so that it can fall into the category of a specific study group under 200 study groups the 200 study groups each of them have a name your grant title has to be so simple that it can fall obviously you're going to fall into this study group title category um, Basically, there's a whole list of questions that a grant reviewer is asking. You have to basically answer all these questions in your grant proposal. It has to match the vision of the foundation itself. It has to have an organizational and programmatic vision. Like the vision has to be a program vision, an organizational vision. Um, you know, it has to go according to the interests of the sponsors. So the sponsor, the investors, for example. So let's say the interests of the investor who is investing in this grant organization, who is taking their money to give it to your university through, uh, and give it to who, which you will, from which you will benefit in your university for let's say a period of five years. You have to follow the interests of the sponsors. You have to show how it will impact your college community, your uh, institution community, your society, your government, your um, your whole society, your country, the world. You have to keep showing like the impact and mainly how it will impact their organization. So, besides, so basically besides the impact has to be specific to how it will impact their organization. How will it impact their sponsors? How will it impact and then finally you can get to you know your institution and, and the world and stuff um, in your grant writing in your grant in your proposal you have to have a lot of statistics evidence facts quotes re site reports proofs and like just really concrete things you know no abstract stuff only succinct logical compelling pre-published so for example um, before you write a, uh, before you write a grant proposal what you can do for your merit to make it a meritorious one what you have to do before is you have to write a paper under your subject then you have to get this paper published then you have to use that publication in your grant writing proposal and say this paper that I wrote was published in this place and it has this relevance to the studies in the preliminary studies of the subject um, if you yourself were a grant reviewer what would you like to see in a 150 page grant proposal what would you like to see in it how would you give 10,000 euros to 100 million euros or whatever it is what would it what would inspire you to want to give a hundred million euros to a piece of paper that you that you received? What would inspire you?
to want so normally it would be innovation uh, you know like their scorecard their scorecard is um, you know the things that would inspire a grant reviewer are um, the list of publications that you're in the innovation that is basically um, your approach the way you are approaching this the way you are approaching this subject you're not approaching it from a third person you're not approaching from second person you're approaching the way the approach is made like how are you approaching it from what angle are you approaching it is very inspirational to them if it's a unique way then they then they're very inspired to give you that 10 million if the way you are investigating the subject the way you're investigating um, abilities are inspires them so the if, if you are a grant reviewer you would see what is the final impact to everybody everybody meaning what is the final re impact to the investor what is the final impact to the organization the grant funding organization what is the impact into my um, what is the impact that this grant writing proposal has on my portfolio that I have to submit at the board meeting what impact does it have on my portfolio what impact will it have on the significance of uh, the subject what impact will it have in the way uh, in the depth of investigation towards the subject what impact will it have in the field of innovation what impact will it have in the way it's being approached and what impact will it have on the environment in which uh, this subject is being studied what human Im impact will it have what are the projections of it and what are the uh, what impact will it have in the way that the final data that has been uh, un, uh, been gained from this the, what impact will the way that the data is being disseminated and the way this data is being used how, what impact will the way that it's being used have on everyone you know like you've got a bunch of data how are you going to use this data how impactful is it that the way you have used it after 12 years is what is the way that you will inspire them and and all the strengths like you've just written all the strengths about this about all your strengths your strengths drastically outweigh the the amount of liabilities that the funding is basically going to be handling in your budget it has to be extremely strong and it has to be honest and there are different types of writing styles so it has to have a competitive writing style so the way they discuss it in their board meeting is that suppose there's a whole table full of papers maybe one one grant reviewer will maybe the second secondary grant reviewer might pick up your piece of paper and and he might say oh look the story telling the way that this subject was discussed the, the way this proposal the way the story was told in of in this proposal was really good and that's why the impact scores up and that's why this person is eligible to receive our grant you know um, you you can go online and and all the people all the people that have received a grant prior from this specific organization there they are there's an award description you can literally take that award description and really talk about that award descript follow the guidelines of that award description and put that into your thing because then they know it, it's the same same you know same same like it's aligning you have to find out what the sponsors want and who and and you have to choose who do you want to fund me so um so let's say um this is a grant right a grant portfolio someone with a grant proposal will come to the program program director and they will ask them in your grant uh, portfolio of 100 and I mean many many types of grants who do you think is the best who do you think would want to fund me in this specific proposal which falls under this study group the grant the program director will open his port grant for grantee portfolio like his portfolio of people of organizations that are giving grants and they will choose a specific they will choose a organize they will say oh out of all the 120 organizations that I have this specific one 
for uh, is perfect for this category that you are proposing to me in because because this specific um, grant this foundation has the same study group name that is written on the title of your grant writing proposal that you are submitting to me so this is what the program director is doing then you are asking the program director what is it that this specific one that you're recommending out of your 120 what do they want to see what is the format what is the budget format that they want to see what is the writing style they want to see you will ask the program director um, for these details like that you have to put into your grant writing proposal and only then you will start writing a grant writing proposal and not write a grant writing proposal and then not be eligible in a whole portfolio of grants to, for anyone they'll say that you're not eligible but I have 120 grant people who are willing to give grants but your grant is not eligible for any of these 120 you don't want to be that person so you have to find this out before from a program director and then you can get to writing your grant and your grant is to be extremely enthusiastic because the grant reviewer is tired so it's like how do you positively wake up someone who wants to go to sleep they want to sleep in the hotel room and you have to be so excited about your work that they and be so confident that it is um, that it is doable I mean that it's that it's so possible it's so possible that it can happen that the grant viewer gets excited as well you know you have to just uh, pass on this confident excitement enthusiasm to uh, a, a person who's dying to go to sleep you know you they have to be so sh they have to be sure and they go to sleep completely feeling safe like okay the decision I made to put this person in the top 50 percent it was a good one like I made a good decision you know the grant reviewers has to pat himself on the shoulder and say I made a good decision you know because it has significance so in the significant section how is this significant you have to write about um, here's what we know here's what we don't know here's what we need to know and here is how I'm going to help us get there into what we need to know um, this is what I'm going to be doing this is what I'm going to do so the grant reviewer has something to look forward to because this is the gap and I am going to do that to fill in this gap you have to also include all the controversies that have um, surrounded the subject for example um, like some people agreed to this and some people didn't agree to it this was the controversy so any if they don't you have to not feel shy about including controversies and you have to make sure all your references are also given like that you refer to um, there, this part of the website and you got this information from there all your references have to be intact like the end of a Wikipedia article like how it's be clickable like they have to be linkable and they have to be precise there cannot be any mistakes in your references either um, if you include innovation now now when you're including innovation it cannot be faked so for example if you're genuinely doing something that's in that is falling under the innovation category for the past 12 years and then you write in your grant proposal that look here's the proof that for 12 years we've been following this innovation thing then you can include innovation into your grant writing proposal if you are not doing anything that is falling under this if you if you do have a historic innovation category in your work and you want to include it for one of the reasons that you should be uh, that you, you should receive such a big grant then it is something exciting for the grant review to talk about they can they can from a table full of paper they can pick up this one piece of paper which is yours and say uh, I would like to recommend that this one um, uh, we don't receive many innovation grant writing proposals and this specific one has a very has a long history of innovation and therefore uh, it would be good for us to be able to fund this so that we can add to our innovation category under our in our grant organization which would help investors to invest in us in the future um, Basically, this whole grant writing proposal is about showing what you said. 
so uh, you want you had an idea and you wanted money for it you wanted your career funded you wanted training grants you wanted a fellowship you wanted research grants you you wanted uh, money for your university you wanted to you wanted money for your institution now you have to show what show it in like graphs papers like proofs you know like preliminary data like like you have to have a lot of that and the grant reviewer is looking is is on his hotel room bed he's looking at your sub review the way he's reviewing it is hot or not strengths or liabilities and he's hoping that there are only strengths popping out and his eyes are looking at it as ha- counting the number of flaws you know that's why they're critical practical skeptical busy smart people in a hotel room on transit in the middle of uh, two flights you know like that kind of person is your grant reviewer who is giving you the money that kind of person the way they're looking at the grant at, at, at your proposal that you spent two years writing the way they're looking at it is is this a flaw 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 and what you want to do is say here is my strength here is my strength here is my strength here is my strength so they cannot see any flaws in it you know you you have to eliminate flaws for the grant reviewer the grant reviewer should not be able to see any flaws in your proposal if they the more flaws they see the higher your score and by higher i mean lower because there's a ulta meaning i mean is is opposite meaning um, it's like there's a score of let's say 100 and the more uh, flaws that they can eliminate from your grant review the higher comes your score so it's like oh i'm eliminating all these flaws and then finally the those the grant the the grant proposals that get a score of 15 meaning they eliminated 85 flaws from your grant uh, from your grant proposal you got only you got a score of 15 that score of 15 is a high score so you get to be in the top 50% of the people eligible for grant, for for big grants from big organizations from around the world for your institution or university which you will receive one whole year later so um it's almost like doing mathematics and you have to write a grant however artistic your grant proposal might be it has to uh, it has to be mathematical if all the mathematics of your budget and um the the amount that you're receiving from the grant and all that if it's ex- exact math and logical then it will be uh, processed by the fund foundation the foundation only processes like math your um, your mission and your vision uh, doesn't have to be uh, obvious but it has to be very inspirational and enthusiastic for example there was um, a um, there was a truck company that wanted funding for their um their trucks or something like that and you know everybody knows it's about trucks and it's boring and stuff but what their mission statement what their title was I mean what their their vision was is helping the world keep promises so that is completely abstract you know helping the world keep promises is enthusiastic and it's inspirational so and it's and and it it's it doesn't have to include the word that you are talk about it doesn't have to include the subject but it can be you know something like helping the world keep promises you know it has to have, it has to also be inclusive and it has to have a lot of clarity in it and it has to be a sustainable investment meaning someone who is walking around with a grant portfolio who can boast about the grant that they gave your institution for 12 years after they gave you the grant that is their goal their goal is to add add more uh grant 
add more foundations and grants into their grant portfolio that have been successful successful to them meaning the ones that had output at the end of the period that the grant was provided for the grant is provided for 12 years at the end of 12 years this is how much data we got and this is the impact that the data had and it was a successful fu- funding funding to they're doing making a grant portfolio to submit to an investor to say look at all our successes as well and all our grant uh, funding all our all the fun- funding that we made with our grants have been successful they just want to say that so that, so that to the investor because because only then will an investor invest in their foundation and make their foundation of a higher bigger billion dollar value and keep providing investments to this foundation because they will they will say that oh yeah this is the this is the grant foundation that always has successful has always given successful grants and successful grants meaning the ones that provided um that provided returns at the end of the grant period and the way those the way that those um those um the way the way that it was disseminated distributed curriculums were made you know the way that they can boast about it basically they can for 12 years they want to keep talking about it they want to keep saying look at my beautiful portfolio it's like so successful we have the most they want to say we have the most successful grant portfolio list of grant uh, grant givers list of people who give list of uh, foundations we have the most successful list of foundations successful grants in our portfolio this is all about the foundation's portfolio and the way you can impact their portfolio positively and that's all thank you for listening i know there's a lot more but this is just a little this is scratching like the surface of grant writing and hopefully it can help universities and institutions individuals give um, hopefully it can give sp- specific significant um it can have significant value to universities and institutions who are going to be submitting your proposal your grant proposal that you spent two years on hopefully it will be significant to them when they um submit your grant proposal through them to a foundation that will benefit you for the next 10 years financially thank you for listening